She asks, at what moment did you know that you were on the right track? So when did you identify that you were, that you had found that passion, that, that you were painting the canvas, that you wanted yeah. to continue painting? Well, that's where I was lucky because I did stumble into the fact, uh, my, my dad had a small brokerage firm. Mm -hmm. I would go down on Saturday morning and to go to lunch with him and it was a big deal. <laughs> but in the morning when he worked, I would read the books there. And, and so I found it very early. And not everybody does that. That's just plain uh, luck when that uh, happens. So I always knew the path I wanted to follow. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, was, I was intellectually okay with it from the start. But I got messed up to some extent when we moved from Omaha to Washington. I didn't adjust very well. And my grades were terrible, all kinds of things. So I got very off the track. And it, 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 it took a, well, my... My wife, uh, you know, basically said she just had to have this little watering can that she sprinkled on me, and finally, finally the flowers bloomed. But it it took a while, and, and I was very fortunate. Um, one one of our one of our members is actually asking as a follow up question. Um, this is Casey from Texas. She's asking, um, can you remember a specific time in your life when you? had the most difficulty adjusting to your career path and um and and it sounds like maybe that was your move um to washington but can you sort of inspire our audience with an example of a time when you may have doubted your career path and how did you how did you move move out of that into where you are today i really didn't doubt my career path but uh i i i was not functioning well, uh, I, it was, it was, I was okay in some respects, but not in other respects. And uh, I, I was terrified, for example, both in high school and college. I don't know when it started, uh, but I became terrified of public speaking. And uh, I just couldn't do it. I mean, I, I, and so I arranged all my classes so I never had to <laughs> do any public speaking. <laughs> and I got to Columbia, and I saw an ad in the paper uh, for Dale Carnegie course. And I went down, it was somewhere in the mid-40s. And I gave the guy a check for a hundred dollars, and I went back and stopped payment. I lost my nerve, and then I came out. I got out of Columbia actually when I was twenty, and I came out to start selling securities in Omaha. And I realized I had to get up and be able to get up in front of people. I couldn't go through life this way. So I saw an ad again in the uh, local paper that there was a Dale Carnegie course being given. I went down and I gave the fellow a hundred dollars in cash, and. I became associated with 30 other people in the class. We couldn't stand up in front of a group and say our own name. I mean, it was, we were, it was pathetic. But that class changed my life in a big way. Wow. As a matter of fact, they used to give a pencil every week for whoever did the most with what they learned the previous week. And during that class, I proposed to my wife and she accepted and I won the pencil that week. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's important. I mean, there's certain, you've got to be able to communicate in life. Right. And it's enormously important. And probably the schools, to some extent, underemphasize that. I mean, you can mm -hmm. start going for an MBA, and people think it's kind of beneath them to teach you about communication. But if you can, if you can't communicate, if you can't talk to other people and get across your ideas or write, either, you know, you're, you're giving up your potential. And uh, you know, anybody that's got a career potential of X, I, I guarantee it'll be 150 percent of X if they uh, if they really learn how to communicate well. So that was that was a big mm -hmm. a part. Of really succeeding in my career, you know, when you when you get right down to it. And then I was fortunate enough to pick up a book when I was 19 by a great teacher, Benjamin Graham, and and uh, he taught me a lot about investments. But it was really my dad and my wife that taught me about life. So, is your number one? So, multiple people, including um, Devin here from Charleston, asked, "What's the one piece of advice you would give to a fellow introvert?" And we talked a little bit before <laughs> yeah. this about the fact that this is not in our comfort, either of our comfort no. zone no. as fellow introverts. Yeah. yeah. So, would your would your advice to a fellow introvert be to just sort of confront that fear, go to a communication class, and just practice out of the fear? You have to do it. I mean, I. You have to do it, and 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 the sooner you do it, the better. I mean, it, it's so much easier to get the right habits when you're young than, right. than work later on. And I mean, I think they have Toastmaster clubs. I don't know what they all are, but if, <laughs> if, if they're if they're, you know, uh, to get over fear of associating with people, you got to go out there, out there and associate. And and uh, uh, it's painful. Mm -hmm. It's very painful. When I finished the Dale Carnegie course, now I'm 21, proposed, got accepted, and everything. <laughs> but I was very worried that I would lapse back, like I was before. So I actually went up to the University of Omaha 
and I just I want to teach. Mm -hmm. And I uh, and and fortunately they 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 accepted me. So I started teaching a class at night uh, when I was I believe 21. And wow. and and you know you, you've got to do you, know, you got to force yourself sometimes to do things. And I know it isn't easy because it wasn't easy <laughs> for it wasn't easy for me when I started selling securities. I was. Well, I was 20 when I started selling securities, and I would go out. And I used to walk around downtown Omaha and call on people, and there were people that that I knew weren't going to be that friendly. Sometimes and I'd walk around the block three or four times. Sometimes before I'd walk in, <laughs> work up the nerve to Absol get in there. Absolutely, you know, you, you know, it's 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 not a bad thing to take a job as a salesperson. Mm -hmm. Just to interact with people. I used to sell shirts at J.C. Penney Company. You know, I, I sold men's suits. I sold children's clothing, and if, if if you are somewhat introverted, like you say you are, and I know I am, uh, just getting out there and forcing yourself to get into a situation where you talk with people, most of them don't bite. <laughs> <laughs> what What's the one piece of parting advice that you'd like to share with our members who are in the first 10 years of their careers? You know, just, just find your passion and remember those males around you, a lot of them have got a lot of the Wizard of Oz in them. <laughs>